The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by sportsofanarchy.com. Visitors are, visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by submissionfc.com. Enter the promo code sportsofanarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by the Flex Belt. Summer's approaching fast. You want to strengthen and tone your abs. The Flex Belt, which is FDA cleared, might just be for you. Follow the link in the description below to get your very own. The MMA Discussion Podcast is now available to listen to on iTunes and the radio podcast app Stitcher, which is available for free on all smartphone devices. Let's get right to it. Episode 31 of the MMA Discussion Podcast. I am here with Jonas, my co-host Chris Pagman, and special guest Mike. Mike, I don't know your last name. Go ahead and tell me your last name. Lopez. Lopez. Oh! All right, cool. We got another uh, Hispanic guy on. Good. <laughs> At least they think you are. I don't know. <laughs> um, Chris, go ahead. You're here, right? I still got you. Yeah, I'm here. What's up? Uh, my, my co-host, Chris Pagman, uh, JP, our admin, and special guest, Mike Lopez. Now, Mike is a good friend of Jonas, and uh, he seems to know his shit, so, we love, so we're glad to have you on, buddy. Thanks um, for having me. Yep. This past Saturday, we had UFC Fight Night 63, uh, Mendez versus Llamas. It was a great card. It was really uh, a enlightening card, and it was odd the the time that it came on, but it actually kind of felt like it worked out really well. Didn't feel like it was bothersome for for me or for anybody else that I knew. Um, I did have to get up early. If you were on the Pacific, uh, you had to get up at eight to to watch the televised uh, uh, start to the card. Um, what about you guys, uh, Jonas? Did it bother you at all to have to get up early? Not really. Or, yeah, no? I just had to make a few things work out. But yeah. Mike, what um, about you? Just uh, had a little crust in my eye for this fight. Uh, <laughs> a little out of the ordinary for other fights, but no, not not too bad. It's pretty cool uh, watching a fight at twelve. Yeah, actually, I mean, it felt like it, it felt like it wasn't such an issue. What about you, Chris? Uh, in the East Coast, I feel it wasn't probably a big deal. Yeah, no, I mean, the prelims over here started at eleven. I still wasn't awake, so I just re- made sure to record them the night before. Uh, woke up. Watch the main card and then went back and watched the prelim. Oh, well, you got to catch those prelims, bro. Have you? The prelims weren't that good. I mean, I didn't miss much. Oh, I, I went back. I thought they were really. I thought they were entertaining. The first card. I kind of uh, fast-forward. fast-forwarded through most of the prelim fights when I went back and watched them because they weren't too great. But the main card was really good. You silly hoe. All right. Well, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um. Uh, this fight card had a, a lot. It had a, a lot of great fights, a lot of good performances, and it had a very controversial fight, which we'll get to. Um, let's go ahead and just start from the bottom. Um, well, not from the bottom, because personally, yeah, the first card on the on the first fight on the card was uh, not anything to be gawky about, but it was a great card overall. I I personally loved Timothy Johnson. The fight he had with. Um, that was a very interesting performance, and that was a very interesting mustache he had. Um, walked away with 50 grand. I didn't want to attempt to say that guy's name. <laughs> Who, the guy he fought? Yeah. I won't even attempt to say that guy's last name. I'll attempt it. I'm not no pussy. Here, what is it? Let's see. Was it Shamir? Shamil Abdurakimov. See? Not that hard. That's not Comment. bad. Yeah, it's not bad. See, it's not that hard. Um, it's funny because Shamil actually came it out. Nothing like that, really, though. We'll see. Yeah, I'll find out. Yeah, Shamil or Shamil? Was it Shamil? Shamil. Yeah, Shamil Abdurahimov. Is the case yeah. silent? See, Jones just did it legit. Like that's right. Was the case silent? <laughs> that's what I'm asking. Yeah, was, yeah, like Habib uh, Nurmagomedov. The case silent. All right. I like it. Well, Timothy Johnson, or I mean, Shamil, came out really uh, uh, um, t- uh, aggressive at the beginning, and then Johnson started utilizing some grappling, wrestling, pinning him against the cage. Um, actually cost him a point early on. And then Timothy Johnson, man, he found this takedown, got it, and the second he put him on his back, he got the mount immediately and just went to work, got the finish with just three seconds left in the round, Frankie Edgar style, and uh, was able to get the finish and walked away with 50 Gs. I liked it. I, I was speci- uh, I was a uh, great debut to, to have, especially, and that mustache, my goodness. Um, Jonas, what did you think of that man's performance? Yeah, that was awesome. It was a, you know, a rookie mistake on uh, the Russians' part to let uh, Timothy Johnson step over. 
in that amount that Steve did. But, uh, you know, Timothy Johnson made the most of it, absolutely. That was, that was a good old fashioned beatdown. So. Chris, what about you? Um, yeah, it was, I mean, good win for Timothy Johnson on his debut, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, both of these guys are making their debut, I think. They just, like, when I looked at them, I'm like, these guys look like 40 year old men who, like, are just fighting each other in a bar. <laughs> I was like, worried we were going to get, like, a Daniel, uh, or, uh, what is it, uh, what's his, is that his name? Daniel, the, remember that 37-year-old judo guy? Uh, oh, Daniel Kelly, Patrick. Daniel Walsh. Kelly yeah. and the Patrick, yeah. I, th- I was scared we were going to get one of those, but, uh, t- yeah, Johnson. No, I mean, I was more infatuated with his mustache than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Mikey, what about you? It was a good fight, for sure, um. I was surprised the Russian got took down so easily. I figured he'd have better grappling than that, but it seemed like once he got brought down and mounted, though, it was a done deal. Mm. Yeah, that slam had a lot to do with it, man. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure that took the wind out of him, you know. Yeah, he put him down some serious force, so uh, that might have been part of why he stepped over and because uh, he was out of sorts. Yeah, lost his bearings completely. Sorry. Probably. Good win for Timothy Johnson. Walks with 50K and uh, bragging rights for a, a good fight coming up next, whatever's next for him. Um, move on to the next fight, which was a lightweight fair between Alexander Yak- Yak- Yakovlev. And I hope I said that right. Uh, against Gray Maynard. Now, I, I honestly thought that Gray Maynard won the first round, but apparently two judges ruled it at 30-27. No doubt he won, lost the second and third, um, in my opinion. But... Um, that's Gray Maynard, uh, you know, he he, he seemed to w- want to work back with his wrestling, you know. Uh, it seemed in his last few fights he was so just stuck on, you know, utilizing his striking more than anything. Um, in which, you know, it's not like his, his striking has ever felt like it was anything high level to me. Other than, you know, he may have gotten that impression with the Frankie Edgar fights, in my opinion. Um, with that being said, I thought that Gray did all right starting off. Uh, but you, 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 uh, Alexander took over after this, the the first bell uh, rung, and so with that being said, I felt that it was a good decision. Um, what's next for Gray Maynard? I don't know, but um, Chris, probably. I mean, you know, four losses straight. I doubt he gets the cost check treatment where he gets one more fight. You know what I mean? And I don't know what his contract situation is. Um, like if he has one more or two more fights left, or what's up. But um, yeah. You know, I'm sure that uh, he's got to be thinking about that option, um, which is odd. You know, he's only, what, uh, five fights removed from his last title fight. But, you know, it, it it's always funny how it's just that one title loss can can really send you spiraling down. Like it did to Dan Hardy and Koscheck and others. Um, and so it's like... Hey, he's 35 years old. Man. That I could mean, also have a lot to do with it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, he's been a lot of wars. Yeah, I don't like saying, I don't like telling guys, yeah, I don't like saying, yeah, this guy should retire, but I mean, this, me is neither, certainly. Where, this is one of the situations where I feel it's appropriate, just because, I mean, the guy's been getting knocked out back and forth, he didn't get knocked out on this fight, but I mean, he didn't look that great, he got taken down by a guy who shouldn't be taken down, and his prime would have destroyed this guy, like, it wouldn't have even been close. When you're no longer, like, what do you, like, aside from a paycheck, it's at this point, what is he fighting for? You can't beat a guy who's not even ranked. He used to be a world title challenger, multi-time world title challenger. Yeah, as and I've... he's one of the best guys in the world. Yeah, and as I've said before, so. Jonas and I have had this conversation where, you know, if a guy wants to fight for money, I don't feel that there's an issue with that. But you have to still uh, retain a certain level, a certain high level of skill to be able to continue to compete. You know, you have to have the bragging rights to say, hey, I want money fights and I want to fight this, that, right here or there and the other. Kind of like Clay yeah. Guida, and we'll get to him in a, in a little bit, you know, where the guy can still fight and compete and beat guys. Maynard hasn't done but that he, in yeah, quite a while. Guys. Huh? Yeah, that's the difference. He can beat guys. That's what. The yeah, and we're not seeing that from Gray. So when you when you see that he can't even beat guys that are what I would say mid tier still, uh, you know, Alexander. Yeah, nothing against you, Pavlov. I mean, he's, he's still very young in his career. Won. That's the thing. You know? Yeah, he's won fights, but I mean, Gray Maynard was one of the best in the world at one point. So I mean, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, obviously, when you age and when you get knocked out like that, you're. Your skill 
Cena level isn't going to get any better. But Gray Maynard hasn't really shown much. I mean, he showed something in this fight, but it seems like whenever he's going against a striker, someone can actually hit. Like, this guy wasn't striking very much. If he would have landed some big punches, I don't know if Gray would have been able to stay on his feet. So, tough to say. Very, de very tough to say. Mikey, what do you think of this fight? Oh, um, it didn't look good for Gray. Um, he's been in so many battles throughout the years. I, I don't know. He, I don't think his chin is, is there anymore. His jaw is just porcelain, like, ready to break. Um, you can tell that one good hit that Yakolov landed, and, oh, it sent him wobbling down. Um, if it was a higher-ranked fighter, he'd be been put away real quick. Yeah, you, very possibly. Yeah, go ahead, Jonas. Yeah, man. Uh, Maynard, he did, he did the best he could. Uh, he utilized his wrestling as best he could for most of that match. Um, but Yakov was beginning to, you know, take him out of his game, take him out of his rhythm, landed that really nice uh, right. Uh, oh, yeah. Middle, he ran a really nice right in the middle of uh, one of the great takedown attempts. And the that second kind of round. Back and blocked him. And that, that, that pretty much won him the round. Uh, Could have won the fight, really, because you know how some it always takes just one move, one moment to change the entire story of the fight at times. And I think that was it. Uh, that did it. So, uh, you know, props to Yakovla for uh, sticking up and uh, getting the win off of a guy like Gray Maynard. I mean, yeah, Gray Maynard's on, his, uh, on the downside of the uh, of the hill, but he's still Gray Maynard. So Yakovla took a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like Gray Maynard was looking horrible throughout all that fight. No, I mean, it but was competitive, certainly. It was um, competitive up to that point where uh, Yakovla landed that right. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah, it was competitive early, and then once we an interesting stat we saw once going into the third round is Maynard was stuffed on fourteen of sixteen takedown attempts. Yeah, his, I mean he doesn't want to be standing with anyone at this point with his chin not looking that great, and when he's not able to take it to the ground, there's not really much else he can do. Yeah, exactly. You know, we'll we'll see. I mean, uh. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he gets one more fight, and if he loses that, it's over. Uh, you know, I, at the, like I said at the beginning, I don't think he gets a cost check deal, but at the same time, you never know. Um, you know, the uh, the UFC has cut many other guys for less. You know, so um, yeah, exactly. So you know, I mean, I don't know if there's a great deal of respect considering he's won a. You know, he's fought for the title before. What's funny is that, you know, and this is a side note that's kind of not fair for Gray, but, at the same, you know, it's funny how this guy, being on the streak that he is right now, gets paid more than Nate Diaz does to fight. That's kind of crazy. Um, he's a, you know, but losing four in a row, three by knockout, hasn't done anything big except beat Gray Maynard or Clay Guida um, in the last five fights. That's his only win, you know, and so... Uh, it really shows yeah. that he's got he's got he's got to do something. He's, he's got to make a decision here, and um, we'll see what that is. And uh, if that's not by the time the UFC makes a decision for him, you know, we'll see what happens coming forward. And uh, you know, if that is it for the Gray Maynard, uh, he has had a, an exciting career up to, uh, around 2010 was when he really started to you know gain in popularity and had those two great fights with Edgar. And you know, he's had a, he's had his moments, and so you know, props to him for that. Move on to the next fight. The main event of the undercard, uh, women's bantamweight fight, Liz Carmouche versus Lauren Murphy. Now, for me, it wasn't like the craziest fight on the card. Um, but uh, I, I didn't – myself, I didn't completely agree with the decision. But at the same time, it was – it not too much went on. You know what I mean? And Mikey actually brought this point up as we were watching the fights uh, together at the same time. There was um, – you know, it, it, Lauren Murphy seemed to come forward and supposedly use this crazy amount of volume, but she wasn't like landing much of her punches that she was throwing, which, which was kind of throwing me off. And then uh, would pin Carmouche to the cage at times, and Carmouche landed a, a few, several good kicks and such. But yeah, there wasn't much about this fight to boast about. Uh, Chris, what did you think of this fight? Do we still have one? Um, yeah, like oh, I said go. before, I kind of like. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. Um, yeah, no, like I said before, I kind of went back and watched the prelims after the main card on record, and I was kind of fast-forwarding through some parts, and 
I watched a little bit of this fight, but it didn't really seem too entertaining. And I saw what was going on a lot of clinch work and stuff like that. So I I really didn't see too much. I'll let you guys talk away. Jonas, go ahead. Yeah, um, Murphy looked busy. But that's it. That's, that was all she was really good at. She was good at looking busy, looking active. Uh, she had a lot of volume with her striking. Uh, she had some effective clinch. You know, tried to neutralize. She was, uh, had a promo show against the cage a lot. Uh, always walking forward, always walking forward. And, uh, promo was just playing defense the whole time and playing pretty effective defense in most cases and landed a few nice shots here and there. Uh, so it really, I think it really came down to who was more effective in that fight, and it was clearly Carmouche. If, if you want to just go by the whole fight, all the metrics, um, everything that Carmouche did versus everything uh, Murphy was doing, Carmouche got more of what she wanted out of the situations she was put in. So um, that's how Carmouche ended up winning the fight. And, I, I mean, it wasn't a fun fight to watch at all. It was rather boring, but... Uh, it had to happen, and it's in the books, and I think it went down the way it should have. Mikey. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Mooch, she was just, you could tell by the expression on her face that she, was, she wasn't worried about her at all. She was relaxed. She was like, whatever, come on, bring it. Never in, never in any serious trouble, and you could tell, like, you know. And then, uh, as I pointed out during the fight, you could tell, whose face looked like they were in a fight right now. See, Murphy was a little bit more beat up the whole time time than Carmouche. Yeah, I think that, uh, 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 there's, well, there's much, there's much to say for activity and there's much to say for aggression. And it's like, it's all, you know, gray as far as what really matters in the octagon a lot of the time. Um, cause I, when the, when the, when the call was initially announced that Liz won, I was actually thrown off. I thought that Liz had lost. <laughs> um, I felt like she had lost at least two rounds. And then, um, you know, I think back on the fight and I think, okay, well, there's a possibility she didn't even land more, you know, considering she threw a lot, but didn't land a lot. Um, and you know, she did have a round, a full, oh, yeah, she had like nearly six minutes of full octagon control. So that's a round. She, she had a third of that round in control against the cage or on the ground. And, uh, that kind of had me convinced, you know, and it was maybe, maybe kind of deceptive at the same time. I would really have to watch, rewatch the fight. But at the same time, like you said, this fight wasn't anything crazy to watch. So I might probably not, you know, <laughs> um, it was, you know, good win for, you know, Liz. She definitely needed that. Um, and she goes what nine and five now, um, in the US, or uh, in her career, and so. Well, you know. Nick, you know, a good point is like you never know what judge looks at what too. So. Oh, especially yeah. You, you really never know who's, who they're gonna pick. Nowadays, it's, it's it's pretty crazy. Oh God, yeah, we got a reminder of that later on in the card. We're almost there though. We'll get there. <laughs> um, that was the headliner of the prelims. Now one of the very more spectacular performances came at the uh, beginning of the uh, main event, main card. Dustin Poirier versus Carlos Diego Ferreira um, in what was Dustin Poirier's return to lightweight in which he hadn't competed there uh, and since his early days at the WEC. And, um, you know, wow, what a crazy performance. I mean, his striking looked so on point. It was ridiculous. And uh, it wasn't like he was punching uh, Carlos with, powerful punches he was just punching them with stiff technical shots like you know they, they're not powerful but when you stiffen up or when you tighten up a, a certain swing or punch on a guy it, it does the damage for you you don't have to swing with, with ruthless intent for each punch to hurt you or to even knock you down or to even knock you out and uh and that's what was uh, amazing his his uh i I would say his striking has looked a lot more impressive. He looked uh, great. He didn't get hit with anything significant in there. And, um, you know, he's always had that crazy good killer instinct. And, um, you know, what a way to come into lightweight. And I, I was very impressed and uh, certainly deserving of the 50K he walked away with tonight. Mikey, what did you think of his performance? Uh, the way he looked uh, tonight or this afternoon, it looked like he wanted to make a statement. Oh, definitely. After uh, after losing a first round fight, his last fight, it looked like he was he was out there and he was gonna tell you, you know, I'm still here and I'm a contender, and that's what he showed for sure. Jonas. Yeah, man. Uh, 
like you said about the striking, it was just way more crisp, uh, a lot more technically sound. Uh, he was picking, he was absolutely picking the best possible shots he could make, and he made good on them. Uh, Fahara couldn't get much done on his end as far as uh, grappling, uh, because Fori was just in there to get in there and get out, and that's what he did. He just popped him in the face a few times, popped him really hard in the face a few times, really tight punches, and uh, rocked him really good, and that was it. That was the whole story. Certainly, man. Chris? Yeah, man. Like we were saying on the last, po- uh, the last podcast when we broke this down, uh, Pitori did basically what I expected him to do. He threw a lot of straight punches, uh, was good enough to not stay on the ground or get off the ground with Fahea. And, um, uh, yeah, it didn't, like, once Poirier landed a few good shots, it didn't look like Ferrer wanted to be anywhere on the feet with him. He's like, all right, I got to get this down somehow. Really couldn't get Poirier down. He tried some slick things. But, uh, yeah, Poirier kept it really technical, throwing a lot of straight punches, clean hooks, while Ferreira was just swinging away. And he just got caught, and he got caught plenty of times, and then went down. Yeah, and uh, great finish. Let's also talk about this. It's his, it's, it was his return at lightweight, which is great. You know, I think that's, uh, according to him at the press conference, um, post-fight, he, uh, he talked about how you know, rigorous that that cut was to make 145, and uh, and the difference between the cut for now. He doesn't have to worry about his diet um, uh, at nowhere near as bad. He doesn't have to worry about you know what to eat, what not to eat as much. Um, the cut was easy. He got to worry about his fight, what he had to do, what his training consisted of, which is getting in there and getting it done. And uh, that seemed to make a, all the difference for him. And he got the win. Um, who do we think? Who do we think he should fight next, Chris? Yeah, that's a tough question. I mean, Poirier said he wanted to fight in two months on the uh, New Orleans card, New yeah, Orleans which card, will be headlined yeah. by Daniel he's Cormier and Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader. Yeah, he's from Louisiana, so he wants to go there. Um, I don't know who would be ready by then. That's the only problem because if he does get a fight for there, it'll be tough to match him up with someone in the top fifteen. That's well, certainly, the you know, but it wasn't like the guy he fought was uh. Was he t- ranked? I don't think. No, no, no. He wasn't ranked, but Poirier is also ranked sixth at featherweight. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure you know with as with as packed as lightweight is, I'm sure that there's somebody you can fight. You know? Yeah, I just can't think of someone. I'm looking at the rankings right now. I can't think of someone towards the lower end of the pack at lightweight that's ranked right now. But um, yeah, honestly, I wouldn't want it to be somebody that's ranked. Not yet, anyway. You know, well, I um, think it would be. I, I think if someone like if Ally Akin didn't get cut in this fight and you had the easy fight I mean you could do that but I wouldn't do that now obviously and um I don't know I can't really think of anyone off the top of my head if I, I'll think about it for a little bit but I can't come up with someone just right if now. Gilbert Burns didn't already have a fight I'd like that fight um you that know. wouldn't be bad yeah um I'm trying to think you know uh, I don't know that's tough it's Jonas tough what about you any idea guys, any any know. ideas come to mind out of feather or no 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 lightweight? just lightweight you know because he he's 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 pretty much confirmed that he's staying at, at lightweight for the time being yeah uh lightweight yeah I don't, I, i'm i have to say i run into the same wall that uh Pac-Man's running into i i can't think of anybody that would be ready by june hmm. if we're not talking about june if we're talking about you know if we're talking about another card when somebody would be available, hell, I'd say a guy like uh, Eddie Alvarez, even. Seriously. Does Eddie Alvarez have a fight? Oh, he's fighting Gilbert next, that's why. Yeah, he's fighting Gilbert next. Yeah, that would be a crazy fight, for sure, definitely. Um, hmm. I don't know about Bobby Green. Oh, I know he's, really he's I know Bobby Green's off. I was, that, that, might, that just came to mind. What about... You give him Joseph Duffy? Ooh, that would be interesting. Joe Duffy, the McGregor Slayer. Um, hmm. I, you know, I, that's I certainly. Really think s- of anyone else. No, I mean Joe that's Duffy certainly a good now. name. No, that's certainly a great name. Actually, I actually like that. Joe He's Duffy. Benil so, you know. fights next week, so. Yeah. Um, He's fight Jim Miller. If he gets away from that fight clean, which he possibly could, yeah. but um, um, you know, Jim Miller's always a tough fight, but you never know. Uh. Benil Darius has, has been on such a freaking tear lately that that'd be uh but it, it makes it possible certainly um 
You know, I, say that again. Mike suggests uh, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson. Ooh. Mike, well, Mike, that w- I I would be okay with that if I didn't already think Tony Ferguson deserves somebody in the top fifteen. He truly does. Yeah. You know, he's won yeah. five straight um, and, and yeah. certainly deserves that. Maybe the guy he beat, T-Bow. Tebow. Wait, Tebow would be good. Yeah, certainly. You know, um, yeah, or Nate Diaz. Over, shit. A win over Poirier would definitely help Tony Ferguson. Or Nate Absolutely. Diaz. Shit. You know? Absolutely. Castillo. I don't know about Castillo. I don't know if he's matched with anybody right now. Lozon got knocked out, didn't he? Yeah, Danny Castillo got knocked out. Who did he get knocked out by? By Paul Felder. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but Paul Felder was already supposed to fight next week. So how long ago was that? I forget when uh, that was. It was right, months. Yeah. If he's fighting next week, then that would make him available. Well, he was supposed to. That's who Jim Miller was supposed to fight before Darius right. came in for him. Um, I don't know. Maybe Barboza. That's some Barboza? Hmm. I would like it. I That'd could dig that. That'd be hard for Poirier, but that'd be fun. That would be fun. Can you imagine the fireworks in that fight? Especially uh, with Barbosa. What about uh, Yancey Medeiros? Certainly. Yancey Medeiros, yeah, that's another good one. There's, a, you see, that just shows you how many options there are really at lightweight for Poirier. I just hope that he gets his wish, gets it at uh in New Orleans. That fight could definitely uh do with some star power like Poirier for sure. And I, I'm uh. You know, so with that being said, I, I we'll move on to the next fight. But th- that you know, any fight Poirier's in at lightweight all of a sudden has become exciting with uh, uh with seeing how well he can handle himself at lightweight. Certainly, uh, the next fight on the card broke my heart. But you know, Clay Guida versus Robbie Peralta, cousin Rob didn't get it, bombed. Uh, if you're listening, cuz that sucks. <laughs> um, but. You know, Clay Guida did, certainly came in there looking a lot more lively than he has in his last fights, certainly. Um, you know, while many people say he just kind of, you know, trampoline sideways around guys in their cage, he didn't do that for this fight. Uh, he certainly was ready uh, and, and readily used that, that grappling of his. Uh, Robbie brought some problems, uh, pardon the pun, <laughs> uh, on the feet and certainly made it an issue and uh, as you could see Guida by at the uh, at the post fight Frank press conference he certainly laid some hands on him and yeah. showed how dangerous he is on the feet swollen. yeah that eye was jacked it's pretty bad Dude, it was bad like mm. when we discussed the fight on the last episode i hated picking against your cousin but i mean i just figured it was either going to go uh, if Guida could get the takedown that's what was that was happen. the biggest thing and i honestly yeah. had it in my had it set in my heart probably biasly that he could get yeah, that he no, could defend was, the takedown i mean you, you have no other option than to be biased. <laughs> I just, I mean, Guida's just nonstop pace. He's always on top of that takedown. And that's just what he does. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I just, I, I, I really thought that he could defend it. If he couldn't, then I knew that that, that was going to be the end result. And yeah. sure enough, that that was, uh, of course, the case. So uh, with that being said, Clay Guida now 3-2 and two at featherweight. Um, and he just called out the lightweight and number one contender. <laughs> The lightweight champ and number one contender. Uh, very interesting call out at the end. Um, you yeah, know, he called out Obama. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Bring it, Barack. Bring your ass yeah. in here. No. Nah, he, he named somebody else first. I just can't think of who it was. No, nah, I could swear it was just Dos Anjos. Oh, RDA. He not, yeah, it was RDA. Yeah. Who? It was RDA. Yeah, it was RDA. Yeah. Dos Anjos. Yeah, he was. Because. Uh, yeah. Put some metal in your jaw, so uh, yeah, he was yeah. talking about how, yeah, exactly. That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Mike Jonas, what did you guys think of that uh, that fight, the performance by Clay? I'll let Mike go first. Uh, man, Guida looks wow. Uh, those slams, I mean, cousin Rob felt that like <laughs> I feel bad for him, but uh. Yeah, that wrestling and the the power. It seemed like uh, Guida had more power in the uh, the the lower weight class. Uh, it was it was shocking. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Guida, but you can't you can't deny his heart and his tenacity. He's always on those guys. He's like an annoying gnat. It's like you can't get. Away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so impressive win. So I'm gonna give kudos. Uh, to Definitely. Even I have to do it. You know what I mean. Uh, Clay had a, had a great performance. Like I said, he was more spry in this fight than he has been in, in his other in his previous ones. You know what I mean, Jonas? Yeah, you know Clay. Uh, you know, 
he wasn't bouncing around as much, but hell, he was still bouncing around when the fight was over. With the mic, with the <laughs> like, laughs. Yeah, it he laughs. You know, that's that's always been uh, Clay Weaver's bread and butter, his uh, conditioning, his ability to just swarm and smother. Uh, he just is very good at using his entire body to just keep a guy down. And, uh, you know, Cousin Robbie has some problems with that. Excuse the pun again. It's just the door's open, so I gotta walk through. You wanna know a a fun fact? You can't be bastards, you're all (laughs) camp. So, you know, yeah, uh, Robin got a lot out of the striking department. I was impressed with that, but it just made uh, Guido more certain that what he had to do. uh, was going to be you know, to yeah. use the and take him down, and he got the most out of what he wanted to do with it. He stuck to his game plan. He's extremely strong. Still, there's just no denying it. He's extremely strong, and for being a featherweight, he's uh, much stronger than a lot of guys down there. So uh, he had that to his advantage as well, and he made the most of it. So I, you know, hey, he he just put on a great performance. I had to give him props for it. Yeah. Uh, before we move on, I'm just actually curious. Uh, Nick, we know you you fought before and stuff like that. Have you ever actually trained with your cousin? Once. Yeah, I went with my uh, my dad who introduced us when I first met him is when I did it. It was in San Diego where he was training at the time. Uh, for this fight, I was actually surprised to realize he was actually training in TriStar, which I didn't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. They were talking how he didn't have TriStar in his corner. Yeah, and uh, I trained. That was about. Four years ago in 2011, about a year before, about the year, about a few months actually, like six months before he made his UFC debut, um, and I, I and I and uh, I sparred with him, and I knew right then and there that guy has power. He can knock dudes out, and he has, certainly has. You saw with his 18 and now four, four or five record that he, he has 13 knockouts. The guy can knock dudes out, and I've yeah. I've known of that power, and I was actually banking on it, you know. And certainly Clay Clay felt that his face is proof in the pudding for sure. Yeah. And you know, Ro- you know, yeah. Robbie didn't land that much, but he landed uh what landed hard. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And you know, I yeah. bet you if Clay wasn't Clay, if that was any other featherweight, he probably could have put him away even with Clay's wrestling. Uh, Clay's just a tough I mean, SOB man and, and you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't uh I wasn't banking on that enough for Clay to get, to get away from uh with the win and I, I thought that he'd be able to put enough damage on him and avoid the wrestling and you know, good props to Clay for being the tough SOB that he is, man, cuz you know, that got him through. You know, the good wrestling and hanging in there through the punches, and he he ate a bunch of punches, man. That surely hurt. And uh, yeah. so yeah, maybe we'll get your cousin on the podcast sometime. I've asked him. Uh, you know, he he apparently he's not a guy that wants to do him. He says he'll only do like uh, you know, what is it? Like um, he'll only do appearances. Like we'll come in. He won't do stuff on Skype or anything. He doesn't even have one. So <laughs> yeah, I've asked him. Uh, trust me, he was one of the first few that I uh, asked. But uh, hopefully yeah, I can change his mind one of these days. Yeah, we'll um, see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll move on from that to the next fight. The return of the Ven- uh, Venezuelan vixen, uh, Juliana Pena, who, man, had a, a very successful comeback, winning in the first round by TKO against uh, Malena Dudieva, the uh, the Sambo fighter that came in and actually uh, presented a credible challenge to, get, uh, to Pena at the beginning of that fight, was able to hang in there with her on the feet, and then sure enough got her down first. Tossed her down, yeah. and uh, you know, but Pena got back up, made the adjustments, took her down, and then utilized that uh, that infamous ground and pound of hers, you know, where she went butt wild and got the finish. Um, I was very impressed. Kudos to her for getting the 50k because it's certainly worthy. And uh, you know, I, I was, I, I'm a fan. I really am. I, I really think that uh, she's a very credible fighter. Um, she's got a lot of work to do, definitely. You know, I mean, she wants to believe that she can fight Ronda Rousey, and you know, it's good that she believes that. She's got to keep working with that mentality, and and and. Uh, but she's also got to get a little better. You know, if if a girl like Malena can can throw her around, think of what a girl like Ronda could do, and you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, Painter's got to keep getting to work and keep working and take this year and kind of really really invent herself. You know, she's been out a while. You know, she should also focus on training as be- as much and as best as possible. And, uh, you know, getting ready for a fight like that someday. And not in the near future, I would think maybe like a year and a half or two uh, down the line. She's still young, so she's still got a lot of time to really, you know, get there at some point. Um, Mike, what would you think? Very impressive performance. Um, 
I thought it'd be more competitive than it was, but man. Um, it was certainly a competitive I, round up yeah. until Juliana got her down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that Sabo background from Fort Duvivia, uh, I, I, I was expecting more, but man, that, I, I guess Kenya just was, had her number for uh, the fight. Yeah, certainly. The, the fact that Melina could get her down, but also the fact that Pena could get her down just shows you how um, ready, ready Pena was for this fight, which I give her kudos to. Jonas? Yeah, um, if you look at the size disadvantage, um, well, did he have it being 5'3", and I think uh, Julian was, what, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, something oh, like really? that? Maybe. Uh, I didn't really yeah. see his stats. Oh, also, oh she's 5'5". Five, five. Oh, she's 5'5"? Five five? Milena is 5'5". Five five. I, okay, I saw 5'3 for some reason, but yeah. Um, also, the 7-inch reach advantage that uh, Juliana Pena had, yeah, you mentioned yeah. Joy, um, that had a, I think that had a lot to do with uh, what Pena was able to do as far as getting her takedowns going. Mm-hmm. So I, it's more impressive, on my, in my opinion, that Milana was able to get hers. Oh, and certainly. I, um, also, you know, Go back to that one moment. As soon as uh, Juliana got that mount, I mean, game over. She just could not pop that woman off. I mean, size is the man that really came to play there. A whole lot of body for someone uh, Milana size to pop off of her. She had a couple chances to get out through the back door, but she just couldn't take advantage of them. And I think that had a lot to do with uh, Juliana's size. Um, and once those hands started to come down, with that, as much time that was left on the clock, I, I didn't see how any way Milana could escape and get out of that fight, get out of that round. So, um, good stoppage, great performance by Pena. I was thoroughly impressed. I don't think she's ready for Ronda the way she's saying she is, but hey, you kind of have to say that to market yourself as a fighter, so I get that as well. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Chris? Yeah, I basically agree with everything you guys are saying. I wasn't aware that um, Milana had a Sambo background. I thought her background was in judo. Well, uh, she had trained initially, starting off in sambo. Does judo? She's a com- she's still competing in her be- in her yeah. be- in the belting system, but has a sambo background. Started oh, okay. there. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, her takedown that uh, throw she landed was impressive. I mean, if she's gonna do that, Ronda's just gonna be all over you. And I don't think Juliana's anywhere near ready for Ronda just yet. I think she has to win another two, three fights to be up there, and she has to do it against girls who are ranked. And I mean. Like Nick said, I think a year and a half, two years, maybe she'll be a bit more ready. I don't know if she'll win, ever win that fight, but I think she'll get a chance in a year and a half or two if she can keep winning. And, um, yeah, her mouth is ridiculous. I mean, Milana, I, like, she was hanging in there. She was being tough. I mean, there wasn't really – she had nowhere to go at that point. She wound up going to her back, and then when she turned back over, she – like, the leg was there. She could have went to half guard and maybe last the rest of the round. But, I mean, I don't want to even say that because at that point she was just getting pounded on it. Yeah, it was too too little too late, and Juliana got right back into mount and just ended the fight. Yeah. Great fight from the Vixen, Miss Pena. Who should she fight next? This is a, this would probably be easier. Definitely someone ranked. You want to see her fight someone ranked already? Yeah, for sure. Hmm. The, that division isn't too – it's not too long. There's not a lot of names in it. Outside of the top fifteen, so I yeah I think she can get someone ranked in the lower tier. Hmm. She she she's ranked herself, so I mean she I think she should be fighting someone ranked. That's yeah. true. Good point. Yeah. I say, I say give her a Rocky or a Holly Holm. Yeah, I was about to say yeah. give her a I Pennington. Give her a Holly Holm. Oh man. Give her a Holly Holm or Rocky Payne. I like that actually. Yeah, Holly Holm. That's a, that's a real good that's a real good path builder. You know, whoever wins that starts moving up fast. You know what I mean? Um, you, can, you can even give her Liz. Carmish. Yeah, could give her Liz. Uh, that would be interesting. I would, you know, I would be interested in that fight or, or, or Amanda Nunez. Ooh. Yeah, any of those three that are right above her. Yeah, Nunez. Okay. Actually, I think with me, it's between Holm and Nunez. Uh, but like I said, I don't want to move her too fast, so I would go with Carmouche, and so I wouldn't have a problem with it. And then after that, maybe like Nunez Holm, or you know, get Nunez and Holm, make them fight, and then make Carmouche yeah. and her fight. I mean, winners I'm sure fight the, the winners. UFC doesn't want to match up Pena with home because they're both possible future title yeah, fighters definitely. against Ronda. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't look over Nunez, who's very young, though, still. She's like 25. Oh, no, definitely yeah. not. But um, um, I don't think they would want to match home up with uh, 
Pena right at this point. So yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Car, you know, like I think a Carmouche fight would make sense at this point for her. Certainly. Um, I'm also trying to think. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. Well, I don't know why the idea of Sarah McMahon popped in my head too, but. Yeah, she just lost though, and uh, I don't think they're gonna want to do that either. Maybe not, but she's very highly ranked, and she lost to yeah, Miss no, Tate. Definitely. You know, so it's just like. I think they just want to get her because she is just coming back off such a long layoff. I think they'll want to get her someone like ten nine in that area. Yeah, I hear that. That's why I think uh, you know, if I had to think of excitement factor, who she should fight next, I would probably want to see her fight Nunez next. Um. Uh, I think the Carmouche fight would be a, a struggle for her in the sense that it would be a real grapple-heavy fight. And then it may even come down to the striking. Uh, with Nunez, she's got to worry about this chick in both departments, and it's and, yeah, and it would be, be a, a very fight. exciting fight. Nunez yeah. is a one-fight, is a one-round wonder, you know what I mean? And you know, it's, it, if, if Pena gets past that first round, how would she look going forward? And how would Nunez go looking forward, you know? Because, you know, I've, I've started labeling Nunez with this, you know, like she's kind of like the female Eric Silver right now. All her wins are in first round TKOs, and uh, you know the one fight that went past the first round she lost. So yeah, it's a pretty good comparison. Yeah, and so um, but you know that that for to, to for the female division to have uh, somebody who's like that is very dangerous. So um, more so than the welterweight right now, and so I think that makes Nunez a very credible com- competitor and possible contender someday. And uh, against Nunez, uh, that man Pena, I mean. That would just be wild, wild. You know. What about you two, Jonas, Mikey? Oh, the matchup. Yeah. Did you give your opinions already? Yeah. yeah oh, I, I'm tripping. I, All right. I don't know, Mike did. Uh, yeah, they did. I'm tripping then. Yeah, we, but yeah. Yeah, we, we spoke on it. We'll fall, we'll uh, move past that then. But yeah, possible matchups for Pena, all of them which I like. So you know, we'll see what comes up next. Michael Chiesa versus Mitch Clark. I man, this this fight had me tripping. You know, because whenever a fight goes to the ground, um, you know me, I, I start freaking out, telling fighters what to do. I, <laughs> and um, man, Mitch, huh? Jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Oh, oh God. All right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean Clark. I, I knew was a, a very uh, credible grappler on the ground, as well as Kiesa, obviously. And man, he fought that that rear naked choke off for at least a good solid five minutes in the whole fight. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, Kiesa did everything he could to try and put him away on the ground, and then in that third round, tried to put him away standing. And uh, obviously, it was an incredible performance from Kiesa in general. He did great, made a, a, a dirty fight, tried to finish. And Mitch just defended as best he could, so props to Mitch for the toughness. And uh, Kiesa with a very, very uh, well-earned victory. Um, I don't know how old Kiesa is, though I don't think that uh, should he's matter. In his 20s. Yeah, I think he's still young. It's not even that a matter that I want to, you know, uh, like uh, measure that to, to where he's at right now in the division. But you know, it's just. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty young dude. He's uh, 27. Yeah, he's still got a lot of time to work and do stuff. So I mean, like. Uh, Jonas, give your opinion, and uh, who would you want to see him fight next? Uh, that was a great performance, uh, especially the first couple of rounds for Michael Kiesa. Um, great use of the grappling, great use of the, uh, you know, holding down with that uh, naked choke attempt a few times. Uh, Mitch Clark, uh, props him for hanging tough and surviving, you know, uh, not getting finished. I, I give him props for that, and making that third round really fun, keeping it off the ground, you know, uh, props to Mitch Clark for that. But um, uh, Kiesa, where would he go next in this division? Sheesh. Uh, I think like uh, like a guy like hmm. you can give him a Bobby Green or a um. What's Eric Coke doing these days? Eric Coke, yeah, that'd be another good one. I wonder what he's doing these days. Does he have a fight lined up? Curious. I need to look this know. up. Eric Koch. If Eric Koch is available, I'd want to see that fight. Um, as of his sure dog, he does not have a fight, but he just lost to Darren Crookshank. He's lost three or four, so I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that ain't gonna, that's not going to work out. That's not going to fly? Uh, he hasn't <laughs> fought in almost a year. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I don't know why he hasn't fought in so I don't so know. I, I feel like... Uh, PS is in a similar 
place as, um, or it would be in terms of matchups where you can give them some of the guys we spoke about earlier, like the Darrows, guys like that. We'll see. Yeah. We got to talk about that first anyway. Mikey, what about you? What do you think? Man, very impressive fight. Um, um, when I was watching it, I, I named it the uh, Battle of the Beards. Um, <laughs> pretty cool. I was thinking that Mitch, Mitch's beard kind of protected him from a few of those rear naked attempts. <laughs> it seemed like that, that, that elbow just wouldn't go underneath for some reason. But, uh, yeah, congrats on the win. And then uh, props to, to Mitch for not getting uh, finished. So, I mean, you lose, but still he sort of lost with dignity, I guess. Um, as far as a possible matchup, maybe, uh, maybe uh, a winner from tonight. Maybe... Uh, Iaquinta. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Kiesa yeah. and Iaquinta fought before. I mean, it, it was a while. It was back on the... It was the winner. Fight. Yeah, it was the the fight for the Ultimate Fighter contract. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tough 15, season 15, I believe. Yeah, the live season. Yeah, which is weird. I hope they never do that again. <laughs> Where he finished him, it looks like first round. Oh, yeah. It was a rear naked yeah. choke. He put that boy to sleep. Man. You ever go night night? Know, maybe a, a low low ranks top fifteen. Yeah, you I know. think you just wind up giving him like a Maderos. Yeah, probably. I'm down with that. That's fine with me. I mean, uh, I, like I said, I thought Coke was a good call. I honestly think it still is. Uh, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be upset with it. Crookshank probably needs an opponent, but you know that's got another guy off his season and is coming off a loss as well. Um. I don't know. We'll see what happens with Kiesa. It's kind of hard to call right now. He's not like he's not riding too much momentum, though. He has won two straight as of late. So we'll no, see. he just has the one. I think didn't he? He lost to Lozon. Oh, time. that's right. I don't know why I thought he won that. I'm thinking of Iaquinta, who just beat Lozon um, recently. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So he's just got the one fight. He's got to build a little more momentum, and then he'll probably be in the talks more. Um, with that being said, we'll move on to the most controversial fight of the card. And it really upset me. Oh, yeah. Especially between me and you, you silly bastard. <laughs> First of all, Iaquinta won in the eyes of two people that should not be judging that fight. That was a horrible call. Uh, Dude, you're talking about the one person. You, you're not letting me finish, and I don't and no, I don't think that's respectful. Going. Yeah, going. how dare you. <laughs> if we're going to do this, you got to be respectful. Don't worry about me. I'm right. telling you, go. I know. I'm just saying. I'm letting you know ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. You shush. <laughs> I I thought that uh, that that was a horrible call. The reason being is that I felt that Jorge had done enough to to finish the uh, to win the fight. Especially he obviously won that first round. No one's debating that. It can't be debated. That second fight, he outstruck him. Outstruck him, and he landed more body kicks. And he and the uh, what is it? He attacked the body crucially. He attacked with spinning attacks. He attacked with multiple different variations of attacks. While all I kept seeing, I quinta land is uh, various leg kicks and a couple punches here and there that didn't do any significant damage that, that I could see. And then going into the third round, it was the closest round I felt where, you know, I Quinta landed the more damaging punches, certainly. And, uh, you know, Jorge didn't land anything too favorable. But even then in that round, he still landed more than him. And throughout the entirety of the fight, which me and Adam have always talked about and think that this should be graded in, in, into judging, is that he defended every single takedown that Iaquinta attacked him with, which was nine. He defended nine takedowns, which is an average of three per round. That shows effective grappling, in my opinion, in a fight that didn't have any, essentially on the ground. You know, And uh, so if we're to say who, did, who had the better grappling of this fight, it would be uh, Masvidal, in and which that's case. Irrelevant to that. How's that irrelevant? That shouldn't it's be relevant in terms of the judging of the fight at this point, just because of the way the system's set up. But that's a stupid way of having the system. That's the thing I'm saying. Yeah, is but that you can't, you can't just like you can talk about the system, but you can't bring that into the way the fight was scored. Well, then, but even still, I, I'm saying that that should be judged, and it wasn't. Okay. I'm not. I, obviously, I it wasn't, and it's not even that. It's the fact that you know everything else that I brought up before the takedowns was it w w should have been obvious enough to have given uh, Jorge that fight. In no way, shape, or form was Jorge ever in trouble in that fight. Obviously, this was based on the way that each round is scored. Because if you go yeah. by the entirety of the fight, uh, like all 15 minutes into one thing, Jorge won that fight. You know, and um, especially in that context. In the three rounds, when you judge him, I feel Jorge won two to one. Solidly. Okay. 
you know, and um, go ahead. I know that you want to. Yeah, uh, no, that's not that's not even disagreeable to say because I honestly thought this fight could have been scored two to one either way, and I think I've seen some people say Al should have won, and it was good that he won. Some a lot more people were saying Masvidal won. How many of them were in New York? Uh, no, some of them were, some of them were. How about you I not mean, lie to me then? And then <laughs> Junkie scored it for Al too, so I mean, I'm not the only one. Who did? I. I know there's plenty of people who did score for Al. There's probably more people who scored it for Masvidal. And um, okay, how honestly, did you score? It? Masvidal won the first round. All right, now you're not letting me talk. All right, go ahead. Yeah, Pete. <laughs> All right, so the second round, um, yeah, like you said, total strikes. Yeah, Masvidal, as the stats I'm looking at, landed three more total strikes than Al did. That doesn't tell you what kind of strikes they were. That doesn't tell you what if they were power punches. That's just total strikes. Okay, yes. Right. There, every punch is weighted differently. Al was... I mean, I thought the second round was very close. I thought it could have went either way in that second round determined to won the fight. Um, Al landed a bunch of leg kicks that did a lot of damage to Jorge's leg, and you can't dispute that. He had a purple wolf on his leg, and he kept switching stances. Sure, they're leg kicks. You can compare them to... Uh, you can't... I mean, Jorge probably landed more jabs in that round. He didn't do much else. He probably landed more jabs while Al landed leg kicks. You gotta see what comes into play, what you think deserves more points. I mean, that's a close round. It's hard to score. They landed pretty evenly for the most part. And Al kept moving forward, which you also have to take into account, because that's a part of the scoring curriculum. While takedown defense isn't you, you you could say yeah it should be it should be it, a, it should be what I'm saying is it should be a, it should be accounted for as as effective grappling oh yeah no I agree with you but it isn't so you can't take that into play at this moment of how you scored the fight and also a lot of the shots that Al Al didn't look like he was committing to some of the shots he took he looked like he was just trying to get a hold of Jorge's leg and then throw a punch so I mean that also comes into play too of why maybe takedown defense isn't. Uh, attributed into the scoring of the fight. And then you had the third round, which a lot of people thought Al won the third round, even though he might have got out strike in total strikes. He landed the hardest strikes, despite if Jorge was laughing or not. When he got hit, he was getting hit hard. I, I agree you with you there. See, he was getting hit hard, and Al was coming forward. And, um, I mean, yeah, it's a hard... It's not... I mean, a lot of people saying it... If it was a... A lot of people saying it was an unfairly scored fight. I mean... Um, I say that because... Was, Here's my thing: is that second round, I didn't feel it was that close. Second reason being is because he landed a lot of body kicks. Just because those didn't welt up on on uh, on his body like uh, like Al's kicks did to his leg, I, I felt that those were way more effective than leg kicks. Especially because I didn't even pay attention to leg kicks initially, and then I see that he landed a lot of them, but I didn't see them slowing Jorge down. I see, and and I feel like uh, you know Jorge landed more body kicks than punches were even thrown by Al in that whole fight. That sec that whole uh, fight all together. I don't know. I don't think he landed that many body kicks, to be honest, when I watched it. I watched it back, but I mean, who knows? I mean, and also I wanted to bring up that you were talking about all oh, the two judges that were judging the fight shouldn't even be judges, but the one guy who scored it for Jorge. I agree with was you there. Doug Crosby, and he shouldn't have been scoring that fight either because he has problems, as Ariel Hawani reported on Twitter. He has problems with Ray Longo. And what are his that's problems? Alex and Coach. If you have problems with. If you have. I don't know what the problems are exactly. I don't. Yeah. Ariel Hawani said that he never spoke on the record about it, but he would even probably tell you that he does have problems with Ray Longo. And I mean, if there's any kind, of, any kind of thing like that with a coach or with a fighter, if you have any kind of bias towards a coach or a fighter, you should not be scoring that fight. And that's the one guy who gave all three rounds to Masvidal. I'm not saying that that's egregious, which I think that Al definitely won the third round. I thought. That either way, twenty nine, twenty eight is all right. Either way, mm. I didn't. I just thought it was such a bad call, but you know, it was. Oh, and the, and the post fight interview was priceless. Oh, that was that was the stuff oh, of legends. Dude, you me. I Evil legends for sure. <laughs> dude, we're definitely getting the sound. That needs to be a sound bite. Yeah, exactly. We're definitely using it. Uh, Jonas, so what did you think out. of this fight, and what was that your was opinion? Awesome. Yeah, uh, the fight was you know. I thought with Masvidal winning, uh, just off of what was done, uh, it, and we took a look at the metrics, and uh, all the metrics tell me is that uh, Masvidal did more to get the win. He earned it. He did more to earn the win than uh, Al did. Uh, it's in the books. 
no sense in crying about who won or who lost at this stage. Uh, Al, Al had a really good point uh, as, as far as uh, going off the way he did. I mean, it's not Al's fault that he won the fight. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't boo Al. It's not even Al's he, fault that he won the fight in the sense because yeah. I don't think he won the fight. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not Al's fault that he won the fight. It's not Al's fault that uh, the judges made the decision they did. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the judges' fault for making that decision. I don't even feel so, Al initially thought he won that fight. The second the bell was called, he didn't look like a guy that was excited. He just won a fight. He shook well, his I mean, head around. He looked at Jorge he and looked like he was. And everything. You can't. You can't just base that in speculation. Okay. That is speculation. Sure. Oh, what is this court? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 speculation you brought up uh, something you brought up this stupid argument where ariel said <laughs> that the guy has a vendetta against uh dude they don't have a vendetta they have problems like i'm not the okay but, what, 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 but we don't Hawani's even know what it's about most, okay so he says uh, that ariel hawani is one of the most credible reporters in mma and oh. if he's bringing it up it obviously has something. It's not just a useless argument. It's just something that's been told to him. It doesn't matter that. No, he said like he's talked to Doug Crosby, the ref. I mean, not the ref, the judge. So obviously he wouldn't be saying that if it was just if it was nothing. Hey, Chris. Yes. Hawani's also based out on the East Coast. Ooh. Hey, he is. Yeah, but he's a reporter. He's not supposed to be biased. I mean, yeah, I know Al personally. I've met a few times. I've interviewed him, but. Looking at that fight, like I could see it for either guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, me personally, I, I scored it one and two for uh, Masvidal, and I had it twenty nine twenty eight, and I could possibly see a thirty twenty seven. Um, I mean, I didn't think th- no, the third round was very decisive. I think it could have gone either way, but if you gave it to I I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been mad, but. Giving him the fight, I was, I was like, wow, that was, it was, to me, it was a robbery. Yeah, but Same a lot here. of people are also saying that because of the way the first round went. You can't take the first round into account aside from giving Jorge that round because mm-hmm. that's how the fights are scored. You have yeah, to score exactly. the fights the way they're supposed to be scored. Yes, when you look at the total stats, they look off balance because of the way the first round went, but you can't look at that towards the rest of the fight. Yeah, and that's not what we're doing. I mean, oh, no, no, like no. I said, saying as no. a generality to what other people are doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just for me. I don't. I, I, for me, people are saying, you know, it could have been uh, either way. It was close. I, I, for me personally, watching it, I don't feel like not that it wasn't close. It was certainly competitive rounds two and three, in a sense. I just felt like Jorge uh, landed the better shots in the second round. Al landed the better shots in the third round. Uh, Jorge landed more strikes overall in the whole fight, and also in the second and third rounds combined, the ones that were that are in question. Um, so you know, I mean, obviously it's a statistical thing that he. Uh, it's a st- it's almost like a statistical fact that he won that on paper, but that's not how the the fight was. Uh, you know, um, announced or awarded. So, and, and that's just the and, and it's not even like that. That's how I wanted it to be. That's how I would want a fight to be scored. Uh, at, at all times, but um, you know, because it, it obviously doesn't tell the whole story of the fight. But you watch this fight, and I just don't see Al. Did, I, I don't think Al did enough to take this fight away from Jorge. You know what I mean? Um, that's the biggest thing is I don't feel like he did. You know? Oh, and I want to say if you score, if anyone scored that first round ten eight, you're a goofball. No, I, it was certainly competitive up till the the finishing moments. You know, of that round. Yeah, it's not like the same deal where somebody brought up um, the, uh, the the Danny Castillo Edson Barboza fight where Danny Castillo for like a full half a round just went ape shit on Edson Barboza, and then the next yeah. two rounds Edson won and they felt that the first round, including Dana White, came out and said that that first round should have been a ten eight and made it a draw. Yeah, no, um, to get a ten eight, you basically need to just dominate someone the whole round. Most yeah. of what Jorge did. It was in the final final minute of that round. It was certainly, in the final minute. I mean. Yeah, and most of it was like the final 20 seconds because Al even wound up going for a heel hook at one point when he got a hit, so. Oh, yeah, that silly-ass Rio Chonin yeah, wannabe was, that fucking. That wasn't a bad heel hook. I mean, it, it yeah, was, it was. No, I mean, it wasn't bad. He went for it. Obviously, he was hurt, and that's why he went for it, but at least he went for something and didn't just lay flat on his back. Oh, certainly, you know. You, I mean, you, whenever you're... 
uh, my I don't know how what he was thinking or how he was thinking that whole fight. Because he's fucking mid. Dude, he'll suck. Oh man. Yeah, just because you suck at them doesn't mean that they suck. All right. No, 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 no. I'm saying like they suck to get put in. They are horrible. Oh yeah, definitely. Knee bars are the worst to me. Suck. Yeah, knee bars are the worst to me. That's why Husamar Paul Harris is truly one of the most scariest son of a bitches in the world to me. Uh, I wouldn't want to be caught in anything that that guy puts on me. Uh, Hell no. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, overall, I, I think Jorge was robbed. Um, it was a bad call. I think, one of those... you, I think you're using the word robbery too loosely. No, I'm not. I'm using it justifiably, and uh, I'm going to keep using it no matter what you say. Yeah, <laughs> keep it moving. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, otherwise, it, it was a it was an entertaining fight to watch. I mean, I bet you if it, to me honestly, if like if Jorge would have won the fight, which I feel like he should have, um, then I would I would have given that like fight of the night contendership right there. You know what I mean? Um, I think it was martyred by the bad decision call, and the fact that Ally Quinta cussed out the crowd at the end. Um, Dude, that was awesome. That was awesome. That needs to be a soundbite, and it will. We'll make it. We'll get that. Yeah, no, definitely. You I send me that clip, and I'll shorten it up, and we'll make that a thing. <laughs> Whenever we're talking about somebody who's being a dick in MMA, we just, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, <laughs> that's what they get every time. Um, what's funny, actually, is that there were rumors spreading that the commission, the Virginia commission, actually wanted to fine Ally Quinta 50 grand, or not 50 grand, 5 grand for the uh for the incident uh i haven't heard anything else about it um i've only read about it on twitter <laughs> what that would be can, like find him for huh what can they find him for i don't yeah i don't know yeah exactly for i mean person there's freedom before. of speech yeah exactly yeah, right. so i mean i don't see what they can i just think it's a funny little fact that that's what i heard you know so even if they could i don't think they should no, they shouldn't. It's not. It's not even a big deal. I I could understand if like the UFC gave him a, a fine because he cussed yeah, on live TV. And he cussed on live TV. That's the biggest thing. He doesn't represent Virginia's uh, commission at all. Dude, so. we've seen Nate Diaz give the finger on Fox. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. In the middle of a fight. So I mean, yeah. you, if you're not finding Nate Diaz for that, you shouldn't be finding Al for saying "fuck you" at the end of uh, end of the fight. I agree. Yeah. No, I was just putting throwing it out there. I agree. It'd be silly all together. I don't think the commission has a leg to stand on them. No. So, no, know, certainly. Like, it's, it was just a rumor. No. Like I said, and it probably has no merit at this. I would bet if they talk about it further that they would understand that for sure. We'll move on to from that from this controversial fight. Very unfortunate. Um, for anybody watching, let us know who you thought won and why. We I definitely love to hear your opinions. Um, Move on to the main event of this of this awesome card. It was uh, Chad Money Mendez versus Ricardo Lamas. Sorry, Jonas. Lamas did not get the upset. It was a yeah, starchin. Yeah, yeah. It was a very bad starchin on the on the part of Money Mendez who went in there and got it done. Um, to the point where he just told the ref, "This guy's done," and he literally told him, "He's like, come on," and he gets off. <laughs> Great fight, great performance by Money Mendez, uh, one of his best for sure against a really credible opponent in Ricardo Lamas. Um, I thought it would be a lot more competitive. I'm surprised that Money came in there as as ready as he was and you know uh, put put away the uh, Lamas pretty quickly. And uh, you know now that the, now that he's finished a, another top ranked opponent in the first round, uh, it's funny where to see where he goes from here. You know um, the Aldo McGregor fight uh, isn't happening till July. It's three months away. Um, Mikey, what do you think? What do you think's next for Money Mendez? What do you think of the performance as well? Oh man, I, I think uh, after this fight, he should be one contender in the in the mix at least. You know, uh, right right beneath uh, title contention. Ah, uh, that guy, man, he hits hard. He really he really hits hard. He, he if he hits you, he hurts you. If he hits you clean, um, very impressed. Um, I thought it'd be more competitive. I was I was stunned that it ended like that. Certainly. I, uh, Jonas. Well, uh, what I looked at, uh, Lamas actually did not look bad until he got hit. Certainly. Lamas, yeah, Lamas actually was uh, holding his own in there, and it really just again it comes down to that one move, that one moment, and when uh, basically when uh, Chad crowned him in the forehead. Mohawk. When he yeah, when he blessed him with the mohawk. Oh uh, yeah, he punched him right in the mohawk. <laughs> you know, after that, Lama could barely stand. Yeah. He lost all of his equilibrium.
delivery. I mean, he just wasn't able to stand again. On roller skates. Yeah, he was, you know, <laughs> like, Club Zero fucking put that ice on the What? 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 So, you know, <laughs> that, whole, that one punch turned it all around. But before that, I mean, Ricardo was looking great. He was, you know, throwing kicks. He was throwing punches. He was getting around there, you know. Uh, Chad couldn't find his reach until he cut him off from the cage and just got that nice little right hand to the forehead. And that was the whole story. Certainly. And as far as who he faces, I want to see him fight a guy like uh, Frankie. If uh, if Frankie beats Favor for sure, he needs to fight Frankie. Which will happen. So. Did you say that's not happening? No, Frankie's going to win that fight. Yeah. Uh, Wow, sound confident. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not counting favor out in that fight. Uh, I'm pretty confident that Frankie will take that one. Too. I, a lot of people are, and I understand why. Yeah, certainly. Uh, the way, yeah, the way Frankie looked against Cub, yeah. And I'm not saying Cub is a favor, but at the same time, the way Frankie looked, just based on Frankie's performance in that fight against Cub Swanson, this guy's dangerous. This guy's kicking your ass every way he can find a way to kick your ass. <laughs> Uh, Faber's a great fighter. He's he's as good as they come when it's not a title on the line. But Frankie, he, he can go to war. Mm-hmm. You know, he yeah. can do the, he can do these things. He can find ways to win. You know, he's. I kind of see a little bit of John Jones in him in that aspect. Now we're not going to talk about size and what he can do, but he can find ways to win. He really can. So Frankie, I think he's the one to knock off Faber in the uh, in a non-title. And I would like to see Mendez fight Frankie Edgar. That'd be a great I would, match. I would love I gotta that fight. I got to disagree with that. Uh, talking just about the, the fight itself, um, Mendez, I mean, Lamas was looking good. I mean, it didn't last very long. Lamas was landing some good kicks. It looked like uh, Mendez was just feeling him out a little bit. And then Mendez just lands that big punch. He corners him against the cage and just goes gorilla on him. This dude, Mendez, is an athletic freak. He's like a little, he's, I don't know, he's like a little tank. Once this guy hits you and you go down, this guy, uh, Lamas was just on ice skates at that point, falling, and Mendes was basically just chasing him around, and at that point kind of like just stop, stopped hitting him because he's like, all right, this guy's done, and the ref stopped the fight from there. And uh, the point I disagree with is that I think if uh, Frankie wins, he should get another shot at the title. I think with the win, Frank, no. Frankie yeah. deserves a shot at the title. I don't no, think he should have to fight for this. I, I see that too, but if that fight can't be made, you know, why wouldn't it be? Let, I feel like that fight should only be made if, in if under some crazy circumstance, the Aldo Conor McGregor fight, there's like a rematch. Yeah, if I there's would a like rematch. to see that if it, if that happens, if there's a rematch or anything Conor like that. Conor wins that. So if Conor Conor wins that fight, then he won't. But. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I think Faber should get a fight next. I think if Mendez, I think what should be next for Mendez would probably be, I don't know, I, I would like to see uh, maybe the winner of Max Holloway and Cub Swanson. Well, yeah, that would be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Frankie and Uriah, that fight's in May, and then you have the title fight in July. If What say, would be cool, um, too, is like, say, you know, Aldo beats McGregor and Mendez is down for chilling for a while, maybe Mendez versus McGregor. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's always a possibility. There's While a Aldo fights uh, Edgar, you know what I mean? There's and a, then, yeah. like Mendez was saying, it's possible if him for him to go down thirty five. He doesn't know if he wants to try it, but he had to sit down with the UFC and discuss. So. I don't think he should. I don't. I think I mean, he's too he's, big. <laughs> he's a small guy for the weight class. He's a he's, huge guy, in my opinion. No, no, no. I mean, in terms of height. But yeah, in terms sure. of like muscle, the yeah. dude, yeah, you know, yeah, no, he's very muscular. I but. He could probably make 35, but... um. I don't think he would do it healthily, though. Uh, I don't know. We got to see. I mean, if he thinks he can, then he might as well try it. But, um, yeah, Frankie versus Favors in May. Frankie, if he wins that fight and you have Aldo win or if you have Connor win handily, you put Edgar in the title fight. And then we could see what what else would you do with Mendez that Connor, uh, the winner of uh, Holloway Swanson, makes this, it makes some sense, especially if Holloway were to win that. Um, yeah, definitely Holloway wins. I when is uh, the Bermudez Stevens fight? That's uh, um, when is that? I know that that's soon. Yeah, it's on a fight night card. I'm trying to remember. I think it's on uh, Carlos Conn and Tiago Alves uh, card. Um, let me double check. I could be wrong. 
at UFC 189, the same card as Aldo McGregor. Oh, so. uh, yeah, so that's a little ways down the road. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, you might you might want to give him the Holloway uh, Swanson winner. That does make sense, and that seems like the only thing to do at this point. Yeah. Especially, you know, I think you say especially if Max wins, which would make sense because then he'd be on a six fight win streak and off yeah. of victory against a top five guy, in my top yeah, ten guy. Why I say that. You know what I mean? And but I also think, you know, with Cub having the streak he did before, gaining momentum back against a credible up and comer, um, you know, could easily see, seat himself back in contention, especially if the guy that beat him fights for the title, Frankie. So yeah, I wouldn't be against it. I just think it would make a, it would be better if Holloway were to win that fight. Oh yeah, it, it benefits it benefits viewers and it benefits probably you know, you know like you know because he's in a fresh face. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also Chad. I mean, it was a long time ago, but Chad did beat Cub in 2010. Yep. Did he? Oh, he did. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. The WEC. That's true. So I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's not many options left for Chad at 145. Let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, In the meantime, won't. that was a great card. I loved it. It was uh, entertaining to watch. Definitely a lot came out of it. Uh, moving forward, ne- this next Saturday we got UFC Fight Night 63. Mirko Krokop and Gonzaga have their, uh, I guess you could say, long-awaited rematch <laughs> that nobody saw coming. Um, yeah, that's going down. Year coming up. What happened? <laughs> what did you say? Chris, you're a jerk. <laughs> Best he, card I, of the year coming up. I didn't even hear what he said. What did you say? That's what he said. Best card of the year. Oh, damn straight. <laughs> Best card of the year if your favorite letter is Z. <laughs> There's a lot of fighters with the letter Z in their name in this card. That's pretty funny. I think it's like the most Z-filled card you've ever seen in your life. Um, I guess it's like Dana White says, these cards aren't meant for us. Yeah, def- I mean, and I agree with them. And, you know, it's good that they're taking this out to Poland, especially it kind of works out considering they just recently came across a Polish champion. Really kind of works out for them yeah. Um, yeah. to go to that market, you know? Um, yeah. I could have possibly seen that coming, but hey. I bet the fact that jo- yeah. Joanna won that fight probably upped sales for that event. I bet you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Exactly. Yeah, I know. So, uh, All I could say about this one is, Coming off this, I'll probably wind up catching like two or three of the fights on rewind after they're over. Silly I'm bitch. Not gonna, I probably won't watch this one live. I will. Well, then good. We don't have to have you on next Sunday. Well, and we'll be, I'm no, gonna come on. I'm gonna come on. I'll, I'll watch some of the fights, but I'm probably not gonna watch many of the prelims. So I'll definitely say that. Oh, it's you, another early card too. You dirty hole. I'll right. be at work. So. I'll be watching it. I'll have a blast. I know I will. <laughs> Mikey, what about you? Are you gonna watch this card? Uh. Do you have a fight pass? Let me ask you. Do you have I that? don't. No, no, I no. don't. But it's probably a good time to get the two-week uh, free trial, whatever. Yeah, this is the first fight pass card of the year thus far. You know, so I'm very surprised by that. But you know, see, I, I just used Nick's fight pass, so that's yeah. All. Oh, you <laughs> hoe! <laughs> I forgot I gave you that. <laughs> they're not What's supposed. To, thing, UFC? They're not supposed to know. <laughs> they're not supposed. Hush, to- hush. Yeah, and you can always watch it back on my own. I don't give a shit. If they are listening, fuck them. They don't know. I pay the bills. I can do what I want. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. There actually are a few fights that have been announced this week that we haven't talked about. Let's talk about them real quick. Um, Dennis Seaver versus Tatsuya Kawajiri, which is awesome. The crusher. getting Got his eye fixed. Seems like he's ready to come back. Um, I'm happy about it. Definitely. Uh, he made a... What is it? <clears throat> uh, who did he last fight? I know he had a fight. Uh, was it Clay Guida? Kawajiri? Yeah. That's Clay Guida. Yeah. Cl- Clay Guida, right? Clay Guida. We- Guida. Guida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he lost to... Uh, or did he beat or did he lose to? He lost to Guida. He lost to Guida, yeah. And then, I uh, think that was like kind of controversial. I'm not sure, though. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, now... I, um, what was it? Because I'm thinking about it, thinking back on it. I, I didn't watch all of it. I only watched the highlights. Um, and then soon after, that's when he got that that eye issue. But you know, he's uh, he's had a so he's one and one, but he's back now, facing um, Dennis Seaver, who's coming off that Conor McGregor loss. I particularly uh, am excited to see Tatsuya come back. We'll see what Seaver's got left in the tank here coming back. I believe this fight is happening at 189. So they're starting to really yeah. fill up that 189 card, which I like. I've been uh, waiting no, for. No, it's this. for a fight night. Is it for a fight night? Tell me which one. Uh. 
for our Germany fight night. I just that's all I see right now. Oh, that's right, the one under the Alexander Gustafsson card. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, uh, good choice there. And then what was announced? It's not announced actually. That's a lie. Rumor is that Stefan Struve will face Minotaro Nogira at UFC 190. Um, if this reigns true, it's a very interesting fight. Um, initially off the top of my head, I got to go with Struve being the younger dude. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, I think that he'd be able to give Nog enough trouble, uh, on the feet to, to make it a, a lasting fight where he wins probably by decision. I don't know if he can submit Nogira, but you never know. Uh, Nog is about 39 now. What? It's happened a few times. Submitting big Nog. Yeah, but but by the two Mere, certainly uh, and yeah, Fabricio, I believe Fabricio yeah, and those Frank are Mere. like the highest level of submission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Struve is up there though. He's got some good. No, Struve is good. good. I just don't think he's gonna. A could, but I see. I don't know. I think Nogueira. Who, who are you having that fight? That one is trying to find a takedown. Off the top of your head, what do you think? Who wins that fight? Struve. Uh, Struve. Struve. Mikey. Struve. Yeah, we're all picking Struve here. We're all picking Struve. Yeah, I got Struve. Um, I'm a big fan of Struve. I'm not trying to be biased, but yeah, I just I think that you know Big Nog is uh, it's kind of I think the game's past him at this point. I know he wants to finish out that contract. I believe he has two fights left on it. Um, and yeah, this fight card will happen in Brazil, 190. So, um, yeah, I'll be happy with it so long as uh, you know, that one ref doesn't ref it at all that night. I'll be cool. <laughs> you know me. I you hope know, grudges. I, I know what you're talking. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Ugh, horrible. Anyway, you know, very exciting fight card. A lot to talk about because of it. Um, fight fans, don't forget this Wednesday we have Ryan Couture coming on. We're very excited yes, to sir. have him on. Um, we're gonna talk to him about his Bellator career thus far, what he plans to do, all that, all that such. It's gonna be a great interview. Me and Chris can't wait. Um, Jonas, you coming on that day? Uh, what time? I don't even know. It'll probably be in the early afternoon. Yeah, I'll be at work. All right, so. sucks to be you. All right, it'll be me, Chris, and Ryan Couture, the natural junior, coming on. Uh, it'll be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, we're excited to have him on. Mikey, you were a uh, terrific special guest. Um, anything you want to say, shout out. You want to give your Twitter information, anybody, anything? Nah, not really. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Certainly. We'd love to have you back on. Yeah, no problem. Um. And Jonas, of course, always a pleasure having you on, my friend. Um, course, especially watching the fights with you. Hopefully, we'll catch uh, some in the next year in the future. Whatever. The, oh yeah, Fo Fox 15. We got to catch that one. Yeah. That yeah. one's the week. Down. That one's two weeks from now. Uh, the yeah. place I can watch a fight live. Definitely. And uh, the 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 date as of press time. This is before April, uh, you know Easter. Um, but you know the when this pod will be out, it'll be the day after. So we hope everybody had a great Easter. Um. Uh, and just, uh, you know, good times with your family. We appreciate you guys. Remember, you can always reach us on iTunes or Stitcher for free to download on your smartphone devices if you want to listen to us on the go. Um, of course, we're on YouTube. We're on sportsofanarchy.com. And, of course, the Facebook page, always pinned at the top there for your convenience, as well as uh, with our um, our episodes archived for you. So um, please share the page. We, we notice uh, yeah. we're getting, a, we're getting a, a good amount of viewers on there. We would Building like it back up. Building it back up, and we appreciate everybody that's uh, sharing it for us, getting the uh, getting the popularity going. We appreciate it. Um, you know, please keep following, please keep liking, please keep discussing, especially. Yeah. Uh, we love having conversations with the fans of the page thus far. They've all seemed pretty cool. Chris Nano, uh, we got a we got a rivalry with you though, son, and you gotta you know you gotta get your shit together. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, that's my boy. Really. <laughs> Tell your boy he needs to, you know, we're coming. I don't even know him. Oh, uh, we'll tell him we're coming for him. Oh, is it because he's a troll like you? Is that why? No, he's a troll. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mess around with people that I know. This guy just messes around with everybody. <laughs> so, uh huh. Uh, he's, who's, he's who you get your lessons from, especially. No, I got my <laughs> lessons from the notorious. Oh, great, yeah. About to get curb stomp next week, and only you know what that means. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you, fans. Have a great rest of the yeah. week, and uh, please get ready for Wednesday. It's gonna or get ready for Thursday when that pod comes out. It's gonna be great. We can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Uh, it's gonna um, be a good one. Before we head out, 
Um, yeah, guys, just keep sharing the page. The more the page grows, the more the podcast grows. You share the podcast too. And it, it, we're going to do this regardless of how big the podcast is. It's just a lot of fun for us to do. But the bigger it gets, the more opportunities we get. We can do more fun things. Maybe if this podcast gets big enough, we can do a lot of fun things, have a lot more people on. And it just makes it better for you guys in return that are listening. So we really appreciate it. Thanks. We definitely appreciate it. Mikey, if you have Facebook, go like this page. I don't know if you know. He did? Oh, yeah. Damn right he did. <laughs> he's, a, he's a returning – He's back home. He's a returning fan. Hey, dude. Yeah, just so y'all know, I started out. I started out with the JDS fan page, like. Oh wow. I'm an original, yes yeah. sir. He's oh, an original. oh shit. Jonas, Jonas followed the suit on uh, on my like. Yeah. Wow. Well. That's the truth. You know, uh, we uh, we'd appreciate uh, any discussion or activity you get for the page, and uh, Mike, of course, we're gonna have you back on. You're a good guest, man. Appreciate it. Everybody, have a good rest of the week and, uh, you know, hold your breath until uh, Thursday. It's going to be awesome. Later.